The Justice Department has filed new charges against Hunter Biden, the son of President Joe Biden. He's facing nine tax-related charges, including three felony counts that were brought by special counsel David Weiss. The allegations include failure to file and filing a false return. If convicted, he could face a maximum of 17 years in prison. The White House has declined to comment. His lawyer said in a statement, if Hunter's last name was anything other than Biden, the charges would not have been brought. Meanwhile, we're also following Donald Trump's legal problems. One day after skipping the latest GOP debate, Donald Trump took his 2024 campaign message to a New York City court. The former president spun his civil fraud trial as a, quote, political prosecution aimed at keeping him from returning to the White House. We're guilty of nothing. This is election interference at a level that has never seen before. It comes out of the DOJ and the White House uh, in order to hurt a uh, political opponent. And actually, it's driving up my pulse because the people of our country get it. I should be right now in Iowa and New Hampshire, South Carolina. I should be sitting in a courthouse. Let's make one thing clear. For fact's sake, there is absolutely no evidence that President Biden was involved in Donald Trump's case. And this trial is in a New York state court brought by New York's attorney general. President Biden and the feds have no power over this court. Donald Trump is expected to testify as the final defense witness in the case on Monday. Trump, two of his sons and his business are accused of inflating the value of his assets to obtain favorable loans and insurance deals. New York Attorney General Tish James wants Trump to pay a total of $250 million, and she wants the Trump family to be barred from running any sort of business in the state of New York. Meanwhile, Trump is also trying to slow down proceedings for his federal election interference trial that is slated to start in March. He has filed notice that he plans to appeal Judge Tanya Chutkin's ruling that he doesn't have immunity from prosecution in this case. The latest appeal could go all the way to the Supreme Court, which, of course, could mean a delay in the start of the trial. And delay has been the name of the game for Donald Trump since the beginning. Today, a judge granted a Texas woman's request to have an abortion. Kate Cox is her name. She sued the state for permission after her fetus was diagnosed with a condition that is nearly always fatal. And her doctor said that the pregnancy could threaten her own health as well. But her fight is now far from over. My colleague Laura Jarrett spoke with Cox after today's decision. I never thought I would ever need or want an abortion. If Cox carried the pregnancy to term, doctors warned she would be at risk for serious complications that could affect her ability to have more children. There's no outcome here that I take home my healthy baby girl. Texas bans most abortions as soon as the baby has a heartbeat. There are medical exceptions, but critics say the language is vague, leaving doctors fearful of getting sued for performing one without a court order. Today, the judge siding with Cox saying the idea that Ms. Cox wants desperately to be a parent and this law might actually cause her to lose that ability is shocking and would be a genuine miscarriage of justice. Tonight, the Texas Attorney General pushing back strongly, arguing Cox has failed to show she qualifies for a medical exception. The AG is sending a letter to Cox's hospital warning prosecutions are still possible if they allow her doctor to perform an unlawful abortion, despite the ruling. The rule of law doesn't mean anything to the attorney general of Texas. Today's decision applies only to Cox, but separate challenges to the laws in Texas filed by other women are still ongoing. Meanwhile, Cox still dreams of expanding her family one day. I want the opportunity to get the health care I need and heal and then you know, try again. Here to discuss Dr. Kavita Patel, clinical physician and former senior policy director during the Obama administration. Kavita, we need your help here. This woman never thought she wanted an abortion. She doesn't want an abortion. She wants a baby. And doctors have told her this baby is most likely not compatible with life. Her health is at risk. When people think about an abortion, do they think about situations like this? No, Stefan, and 
sadly, this is not that uncommon. Keep in mind that Texas has currently, there are 20 women who are part of that kind of suit that waiting to be heard before the Texas Supreme Court so that they can qualify for that medical exception because the attorney general, Ken Paxton, the same one that's threatening the hospitals for this woman's doctor, that same attorney general is trying to block the very kind of medical exceptions that other judges have deemed to be valuable. So this is not that uncommon, number one. And number two, if you're a woman of reproductive age and you might think this couldn't happen to me, I can guarantee you Kate Cox did not think this would happen to her, that at her 20-week you know, fetal kind of ultrasound anomaly scan where they were looking for any of these anomalies, they found trisomy 18, this particular chromosomal disorder where there is virtually a 0% chance of having a live baby at one year even. So this is not a situation Steph, any of us would want to be in, but unfortunately too many women, and especially in the state of Texas, are finding themselves in. But is the issue now that, that we're unclear with what the definition of an abortion is? Right years ago, um, right. I had a miscarriage and a doctor performed a DNC, right. and I never would say that was an abortion, but suddenly are we now questioning that? I think that if you go back to just, and I go back to like my medical textbooks, that the definition of an abortion is really removal. It's very technical stuff. It's just removing the contents of the uterus that can be anything from fetal tissue to abnormal cells. Any of those things can be classified as an abortion. What I think you're hearing, and now people are taking the term abortion and they're using it as a, a sword, as a weapon and trying to create false divisions. I think the most important thing to remember here is that this woman wasn't evaluated by one doctor, just one single OBGYN. She actually visited the emergency room over three times in the past month because of complications related to this pregnancy and to the fact that she's had two prior C-sections. So everything we're talking about, this kind of politicization of a medical issue is something that has been artificially created and now unfortunately codified in law post dub I mean, this if you would have told me in 2023 with all the advances we have in science that I can take an advance, a person with advanced lung cancer, advanced ovarian cancer, potentially offer them a complete cure, and I'm having to explain why we have to save a woman's life and that it's all happening in the same week, I wouldn't believe you. And that's exactly where, where we're at right now. And it's not just Texas. To be clear, this is becoming incredibly like vivid and candid in the state of Texas. This is happening in many states in the country. We just don't have as many women as brave as Kate Cox to literally go through the worst grief a family can go through on in public display and in courts. How risky is it for her in terms of her health, right? So, so the judge rules in her favor. Yeah. Then Ken Paxton throws right. this, you know, letter to the hospital. She currently is carrying right. this baby and time's a wasting. Right, that's right. And and the doctors have made it clear every single kind of moment that she's having also these complications while she's trying to go through these onion layers in the courts. And people just want to give care. She has had her doctors, not one doctor, doctors plural, entire care teams that have said that their hands are tied. That has come up time and time again. And Ken Paxson sent it to three hospitals, every hospital where these doctors have privileges and has made it clear, even in his statement, has said that the hospitals have a right to do what the courts don't have the courage to do. The hospital should sit in the middle of this. And then reminding everyone in the state of Texas that SB8 is still on the books and that someone could bring a civil suit to these doctors. So can you imagine, Steph, if you're anybody in that care team, think about how many people from nurses to doctors are part of that care team and think about the threats that they are constantly put under. Steph, you tell me, who's going to want to deliver women's health care in that environment? Even just any basic women's health care, it is, it is actually going to be what I think defines our generation, that we will leave much of the women behind, not just women who need reproductive health care, but all essential women's health care is at risk because people will not go into this profession. Who wants to be an OBGYN in the state of Texas? Who wants to practice under these conditions? People might not want it, but of course, we need it.